so hi guys this is my next video in the sequence of engineering models and today i will be talking about hovercraft so hovercraft is a vehicle that is capable of moving over land and water so in today's short video we will be talking about the historical features of the hovercraft then we will take a look at what is air cushion vehicle then we will see what is hovering and take a look at our CAD model to have better understanding of the components and the parts used in the manufacturing and assembling of the hovercraft and at last we will see the basic principles involved and in applications hovercraft is an air cushion vehicle that means it is capable of moving over a layer of air it is also an amphibious vehicle that is capable of moving over land and water now the first design of the hovercraft was designed in 1950s and at that time it was called as surface effect vehicle now when i'm talking about surface effect i am saying that it is a type of effect that helps the hovercraft in moving at a certain height from the ground due to the thrust which is generated with the help of the ground let's take example here guys so considering the upper duct to be the propeller so the propeller throws air downward now when it throws air downward the air strikes the ground and after striking the ground due to the newton's laws an upper thr thrust is generated over the hovercraft and that thrust is responsible for moving of the hovercraft at a certain height now we will see some of the basic parts involved in the assembling of the hovercraft that is the skirt a propeller hull or the base a rudder that is used to give the direction engine that can be oil operated but here we will be more concentrating over the electrical components we also have a motor here now let us take a look at our CAD model to have better understanding of the topic so these are the two motors we are having two motors which are installed over the hovercraft this is the rudder which is used to give direction to our hovercraft this is the main base or the hull over the hovercraft this is the skirt in which the air is dispersed of when this propeller throws the air downwards so this skirt can completely fill with the air so these were the basic parts involved in the manufacturing and assembling of the hovercraft now we will move further and talk about hovering so hovering typically means that remaining in one place in air that means our hovercraft or the vehicle can hover at a particular height and does not throttle that means it does not move up or down it only moves at a particular height now let us take a look at the Bernoulli's principle Bernoulli's principle is actually totally dependent or like totally guided by the conservation of energy I'm telling you guys this Bernoulli's principle now because uh, it is the principle that guides the working of the hovercraft so Bernoulli's principle states that the summation of pressure head the kinetic head and the potential head is always constant where P is the pressure, T is the density of the air, V is the velocity and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Keep in mind guys this formula because we will be deriving all the sort of formulas used in the manufacturing of the hovercraft. So let us first talk about the static conditions that is the vertical direction. Here considering it as the downward propeller that is used to throw the air inside the skirt. Let us assume that it throws M1 mass that is in kg per second into the skirt and that capability of this propeller of throwing mass M1 per second into the skirt depends on its pitch, its angle, material, speed of rotation etc. Now let us assume that after time T the skirt is completely filled with air and at that particular time the pressure inside will be P. Now we can calculate that pressure small p that is equal to mrt that is given by the gas laws where m 
small m is the total mass of the air at that particular time r is the gas constant and t is the temperature of the surrounding we can calculate the small m as small m is equal to m1 into the time elapsed in completely filling the skirt so we can calculate the pressure inside or otherwise we can use some kind of barometer to find the pressure at that time now thrust generation thrust generation is the process which is dependent on the propeller actually thrust is given by density of air into area of the hole in the skirt into velocity square where v is the velocity and uh, it is the velocity of the air that is coming out from the hole now for the hovering of the hovercraft the thrust must be greater than the weight of the hovercraft and more thrust means more hovering height now let us see how it is actually happening by looking at our cad model now this is a cad model here we will see how the process is actually happening so this is the motor to which the propeller down the propeller is mounted and this is the horizontal motor through which the horizontal propeller is mounted this is the vertical propeller which is which was like capable of throwing m1 mass per kg into the skirt so when this propeller rotates it throws m1 mass of air in kgs per second into the skirt and after time t when the skirt gets completely filled with air the air comes out from this hole with certain velocity and that velocity is responsible for the thrust generation because thrust is given by the formula density into the area of the hole into the velocity by which the air is coming out from this hole so these were the basic things now we will understand how to calculate the velocity or the escape velocity of that air now the thrust was already given by density into area into velocity square and bernoulli's principle is already given by pressure head plus the kinetic head plus the potential head now assuming that the velocity inside the skirt is zero we are considering when the when the skirt is completely filled so the velocity of air inside the skirt is zero at that time now using the bernoulli's principle formula we can calculate the velocity of air by which it is coming out that is given by twice of pressure inside minus pressure as outside divided by density whole to the power of 0.5 or 1 by 2 Considering this formula, P1 plus half dV1 square plus dGH1 is equal to P outside plus half dV square plus dGH. At both the sides, the H is same because we are we are making the calculations calculations at the whole position. So H is same for both. So H gets cancel out. the velocity inside is zero so half d v1 square also gets zero so by calculating we can say that p1 that is a pressure inside that have we have already calculated by using the formula p is equal to mrt that is a small p so p minus p outside that is the atmospheric pressure into 2 divided by density whole to the power of 0.5 gives the actual velocity by which the air is escaping out and that velocity is quite responsible in generating the thrust now we will take a look at the dynamic conditions that is the horizontal condition of the hovercraft so this is the rudder that is used to give direction this is the thrust generating device that is the motor that is and the propeller is mounted over the motor now this motor or the propeller throws the air at the back that it strikes the rudder and after striking the rudder it travels outside and that's how our hovercraft hovers in forward direction now let us see how to make or to measure the direction actually momentum transfer is responsible for direction change 
at left side there is a figure of side side view figure of the uh, the rudder and this is the front view of the rudder now let us assume that after striking the air is coming with velocity v1 and after striking its velocity is v2 at some angle now m1 v1 is always equal to m2 v2 in that particular direction where the force is zero so we can actually calculate uh, we can actually give direction to our hovercraft let us see how it is actually happening by look at our cad diagram now uh, all th all sort of thrust generation processes were told to you now we will take a look at how it is like we are giving direction to our hovercraft this was the propeller that is throwing air backwards and after throwing air backward due to the newton's laws it gets a forward push now we are actually having a rudder that is used to give direction to our hovercraft now when the air strikes the rudder and suppose the rudder is at this angle so after striking the rudder the air moves in that in this direction giving some sort of momentum change and that is responsible for giving direction when the air strikes the rudder like this it moves in this direction and the momentum is transferred and thus our hovercraft will be moving in the anti direction of the striking of the air i hope you guys are understanding this when we are moving the rudder like this the air after striking the rudder like at this angle it moves at this side so the hovercraft must move in this direction to conserve the momentum that means it should have a velocity in this direction to conserve the net momentum that's how we can understand the direction measure of the hovercraft now let us move further and talk about its applications or first we will see the types of systems of the hovercraft we have a open plane system and a closed plane system closed plane system is a type of system here in which a blockage or a barrier is used rather than rather the rather than moving the air directly outside or directly to the ground it first strikes a barrier hence after that it changes the its direction and moves out like this it is quite a more efficient way of generating thrust because after like striking momentum change is quite less in this case and the air also escapes out very less the escaping out of the air is very less and hence we are get, getting a more thrust other system is the open plane system in which the air directly gets out from the skirt and we are like getting a less thrust in comparison to the closed plane system then let's see some of its application hovercraft find this vast application in various field of the sciences biology military etc uh, it is also used at the time of natural calamities for the transfer of food or people from one place to another it is also used in the transportation in areas such as islands or sea areas ha huh, it can also run over mines that is it, it is very beneficial at the time of wars so people use hovercraft when it 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 has to like cover a area an area covered with mines because the thrust it is actually applying downwards the hovercraft the force up, applied by the hovercraft downwards is quite less and the mines run on the procedure when that a particular weight is put over them they burst off so they don't burst off when the hovercraft runs over them because the actual weight is minimized now the theory part is over now we will see at the cad model to have better understanding of all those things so let me summarize all the things this was the hull we have the motors one motor that throws the air downward the other motor that is like the propeller is mounted over the second motor and this propeller used to throw the air at the backward this is this motor used to give forward push and this motor is used to provide a thrust that it is used that means it is used to uh, to provide the hovering characteristic to our hovercraft 
now this propeller the downward propeller fill up the skirt and after filling up the skirt the air comes out from the hole and due to the pressure difference the air comes out and we are getting some amount of thrust and the thrust is used for the hovering characteristics these are the rudders that are used to give direction to our hovercraft that i've already told you and this is the main base or the hull to which all the things are actually mounted so thank you guys for watching my video if you liked my video please subscribe my channel share my video have a nice day bye bye